symbol. You're making me feel sad for him now. It's it's worse than that movie Serendipity, where she goes to like the 38th floor and he gets in the elevator and hits the 38th floor button, but she's not patient enough. So she just goes down the stairwell and then the door opens and you're like, <gasps> if she just tripped on something. Ah, oh, God damn it. It's, it's like that, James. It is. Okay. You can You can go ahead and introduce our players if you'd like. All right. Okay. Although I feel kind of sad now. It's all right. Okay. I'll I'll stabilize. I'll stabilize. We have spawning over to the left hand side here as our red Zerg, the Serendipity Zerg. Apparently, he goes by the name <laughs> of T S L Symbol. <sighs> End up in the top right position. Who's been having high variance play as of late? That has amazingly been on the heavy upswing. Can he continue to ride it? It is Liquid Hero. Doing well for himself, all those Liquid fans out there. Hoping for another win from him to advance on to the live stage. Round of 16 as Hero. I mean, he has all the chops to be able to do it. Will he be able to take out Symbol here? And even if he doesn't, he still has a second shot being in that upper bracket here right now of the GSL format group. So for now, Antigua Shipyard is our map of choice and Symbol's going for a 10 pool. Actually, is that 11 pool? Uh, yeah, it's 11 pool. Uh -huh, yeah, it is. It looks like it will be an 11 extra, or a 10 extractor trick and then 11 overlord, then the 11 pool. Now, this is an interesting choice because it really does not put you far behind at all. And yet at the same time, it really does mess with that Protoss player who loves going for that hyper early nexus. I mean, this is something that, for instance, parting does a lot. A lot of people talk about the Immortal Sentry all-in. Oh, it's so hard to stop. How do you deal with it? Well, Parting takes a tremendous risk by just blindly going Nexus first. For instance, in the way that Hero's doing right now, uh-oh, it's going to have to be the 17 Forge and then mm. 17 Pylon. And, he, where, and where will his Pylon placement be? Is it going to be between those two buildings? I'm sort of curious as well. It looks as if he's actually throwing it at the top of his ramp here. I suppose, technically, uh, if he wants to start walling off, this could be a good spot to do it. But still, he needs to have these defenses up right here, right now. This is this is going to be scary. Yeah, I mean, this is like a absolute must control perfectly situation. I mean, there is the gateway going down right now. We see the symbol. Ling's heading right on up. There's the Photon Cannon number one. Hero has to both make sure that he can wall off the Photon Cannon, in other words, keep that Photon Cannon alive and kicking, and wall off the top of his ramp in case of a run-by. The Photon Cannon's halfway done. Oh, this is going to be close. How's he going to do it? How's he going to do it? Yeah, he sees everything coming along. The Zerglings are on the way around. They're trying to get there. What he can do? He throws down a pylon to try and block a little bit of those Zerglings from getting onto the cannon so quickly. Nice micro here with the probes, and we'll pull back for oh, now. Oh, wow. Really nice. Oh, this... This is the most painful moment ever. How do you manage this situation? There's the Lings. Everyone knows where they are. Mm -hmm. Zealot has to be chrono boosted out. Ah, uh, Zealot before gas geysers and probes step right up into the fray. Some nice micro. It's not enough. Oh, he's going to have to now try and deal with this in his nat in his main even. This is a bit annoying. The Zergling's going to dance around here. Going to try and focus down on this nat gas simulator. Try and find any damage they can do, but... Still, Hero is going to be delayed by this, and it's always, always, always so annoying when Link's getting your bases of Protoss. Yeah, I mean, not only does it disrupt all your timings, I mean, Cybernetics Core starting at 520, most of the time you'd want it done at 520. <laughs> yeah. So this is a this is quite a bind that Hero finds himself in at this point. Um, he's going to have to build Zealot number two. Everything he's doing has been revealed. And he no longer has a lot of those early timings. Symbol's trying to over-micro, and it looks like <clears throat> microed some of his Zerglings to death. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Symbol is going for the standard six-minute double gas. I think that is a touch early, given the time that he saw the Cybernetics Core go down. Hero has to go Robo or Stargate. Yeah, he does. I I like what you said, though, there about over-microing those zealot Zerglings. I think if he'd have just stuck around and actually just yeah. nibbled away at that Zealot, it would have died quicker, but he decides to get fancy, and it didn't pay off for him. So right now, he's got one yeah. Zergling hanging around in his opponent's main, having a look around for some tech, but I don't think he's going to see it before the Stalker comes out and kills him. Poor guy. 
But at the same time, I mean, even seeing the stalker is evidence in itself where you're like, oh, okay, I got a good sense of what's possible right now. I mean, could be Stargate or uh, Robo, but yeah. we'll certainly not be in early pressure. And there's here dealing the damage. Here just needs to take a third base right now. I mean, that could be. Uh, it's that's actually interesting that you bring that up, Sean. I mean, in terms of actually securing it, because of the way your opponent's opened, and because of the fact that he's only killed one worker off of his, it, it should be an all right uh, situation for him to actually take a third. So, it's yeah, cool. it's very safe. But I mean, the bigger reason at hand is that <clears throat> your opponent went for this early Ling run-in, mm -hmm. which was some investment. But all your attack timings are now gone. <laughs> That's true. I mean, expanding is going to be nice, but um, nice no matter what. <coughs> I'm trying to talk through this cough, dang it. No. I will prevail. Allow me to sip this coffee. Here comes the talking. Now, ordinarily, I would continue with this logic of, you know, your attack timing's gone, your window is through, you're going to have to go for some sort of early expand. Hero's doing an interesting choice. He's going for a warp prism. Why does this make sense? Because Hero has this center watchtower and he's killed off that overlord at the back. So this warp prism, even though it will not have a lot of units, it will have a very, very surprising amount of units. He can actually just treat this like a pylon in a literal sense. Right down where that third base is, he can just plop the warp prism down and do some nice damage. Oh god, and he actually has quite a few sentries with this, and he could even warp in quite a few as well, allowing him to limit exactly what his opponent is up. So simple. A Zergling poked up and the, it saw the Zealot, but I don't think it saw the wall prism for now. The Overlord, does it spot it? It doesn't. It doesn't see it. Oh, this is going to be and so see, look at this. He's not going to try to go for any cuteness at the ramp. He's literally just trying to go, surprise, and just pick off the third. This is a really strong play. Anytime you're able to trick your opponent into thinking you're going for an immortal all-in or expanding, this play becomes massively potent. Our oh, hero here with that patented micro with that warp prism and then just blocking off that ramp completely here. The Roaches can't actually get up. And this is one of the great things about this. I mean, time and time again, people have been saying that this map nowadays is very, very Zerg favored because of the way in which the three base dynamic works and the fact that they can put on aggression. But Protoss nowadays have actually been walling this off pretty aggressively and just killing this off. And he can save quite a few of these sentries if he wants and retreat. Yeah, Hero cleverly didn't warp in more units than he absolutely needed to. And now he's able to Twilight Council, continue to build Immortals. Look at that huge flood of sentries back home. There will be a little bit of poking in the main, but this is mainly a force field, kill some workers. And Hero, yet again, has a nice little edge and is taking the third. Wow. Oh, why not? Uh, <laughs> it's not too bad an idea. He has the minerals for it. He can go for that and secure this quite nicely. Now, what we could see here going into the mid game because of the damage he's done is is that very, very, you know, heavier immortal push with like five or six immortals uh, if he wants to add them on. But he's just going to add the blink for base here with that plus two weapons. And this, this makes for an extremely, extremely hard composition to actually kill off once you lose your third base. You just don't have the lava or the income to deal with it. It's scary. Yeah, I mean, this essentially funnels your opponent into going for just Infestor play. So that's why we do see a pretty reasonable amount of Zealots out here for Hero, as opposed to a lot of Stalkers that would be the more normal mix you'd imagine. Because there's just not going to be that many Roaches no matter what. There's the Pathogen Glands incoming for uh, Symbol, who really kind of needs to do some sort of magic to catch back up. Either stay on Layer Tech longer, take a fourth earlier, or go to Hive really fast. Yeah, I, I mean, technically, you know, the Infestors can do it if your opponent's being really, really clumped up about pushing in. But Hero's the kind of guy that's going to spread his units pretty well across a good avenue to actually deal with everything that Symbol's going to throw at him, both offensively and defensively. So, and it's, even if he breaks down these rocks, pushing up there will be absolute suicide. Yeah, that's, that's really strong position for Hero. <laughs> <laughs> Right, fifth infest immortal on the way, plus two gonna finish up as well as that blink. And seven infestors technically could actually stifle Hero quite a bit if he if he decides to go for some push with this army. Uh, and he's he's not taking up to Robo Bay just yet, so I'm I'm pretty sure he's gonna go for some kind of push here. This is a very, very standard timing for Koreans at Protoss nowadays on three base. Drop down at the bottom side. Hero not forgetting about that warp prism will continue to do all the harassment damage. 
But once again, it's a non-committal amount. Ooh, that Infester pops out nearly. Nearly, nearly, nearly gets taken down. And will also be unable to get the Fungal. God, that is some phenomenal micro there by Hero, who's now moving into mid-map. And oh, a timing push indeed, Kalaris. Mm. This three base just becomes more and more common hero, and those the Korean protesters have been utilizing it so well. Fungal's already hit though, those stalkers. And they do blink up here, actually trying to kick some off of those in investors off. Catches one, but doesn't get the second. Those die off quickly as well. And I mean with investors out, this could be hard for Hero to break, but he throws some fantastic force fields. Oh gosh, Hero is so on point. You know gas geysers even at the third base. Just sensing weakness in the Zerg, and good game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Liquid Hero is your first player to advance on to the next round, the round of 16 in the Iron Squid Chapter 2 tournament.